Hi, I'm Sparsh, and I'm here to talk to you and share some words about Mr. Pyle as he uh, retires at the end of this year. I'm sure Ms. Nizio can attest to me always sneaking into her computer science class a few minutes late last year. I wasn't skipping school or anything like that. Rather, I'd usually be talking to Mr. Pyle for a few minutes after the end of his class. We'd be talking about the upcoming federal election, the Seven Years' War, or really anything else that we discussed in class that day. And I choose the word disgust carefully because Mr. Pyle's classes weren't just long lectures that I've associated with history classes. I remember in the first few classes of the year, we were talking about why history matters and why we're still studying these events that happened hundreds of years ago. Mr. Pyle's passionate response about how all of these historical events still affect us to this day really set the tone for the rest of the year. I didn't come into class thinking that I'd be listening to what the Charlottetown Accord was for 70 minutes. I knew that we'd be talking about how the Charlottetown Accord affects us to this day, where it succeeded, and where it could have been improved upon. And Mr. Paul made sure that in our classes, we didn't just memorize the names and dates of our notes, but rather understood the consequences of each and every one of these events. He made sure that we would get a chance to share our thoughts and express our opinions in class. Every single class, you'd have a room full of students with their hands up, anxiously waiting to get their word in. Mr. Pyle's uh, passion for uh, history and social studies really resonated with me, and history went from being this class that I was dreading at the start of the year to this class that I was excited to, uh, to join and participate in over the course of the semester. And this isn't just something that happened to me or the students in my class. It's happened to every kid that's walked through Mr. Pyle's door over the past 39 years. In our classes, he would often find students, former students, that were eager to share the research that they were doing in university. His passion for history was magnetic, and it made everyone excited to learn. And earlier this year, I befriended someone named Alex, who just moved to Winnipeg over the summer. And he was raving on and on and on about one of his classes where he was excited to go into every day and he'd be discussing. And he mentioned that he learned from his classmates just as much as from his teacher. And it didn't take long for me to realize that he was talking about Mr. Pyle's Global Issues class. Now, while I'm sad to know that Mr. Pyle won't be part of the key centurion experience anymore, I'm really happy for him. And I wish him all the best as he retires. Mr. Pyle, you deserve a break. Hi, Mr. Pyle. Thank you for teaching me, and I hope you enjoy your retirement. Hi, Mr. Pyle. This is Amy. I heard that you were retiring this year, and I just wanted to come on here and say how grateful I am to have had you as a teacher in both grade 11 honors history and global issues. I know that FRC will truly miss you, and thank you for all your hard work and dedication. Hi, my name's Anna. I graduated in 2014. Mr. Pyle, I just want to thank you for all the amazing high school memories in global issues and Amnesty International, and I wish you a happy retirement. Mr. Pyle, thank you so much for teaching us, broadening our understanding of the world, and encouraging us to take action. Thank you, Mr. Pyle. Hi, Mr. Pyle. Thank you for your help with Amnesty, and I hope you have a good retirement. Happy retirement, Mr. Pyle, and thank you for teaching me. Hi, Dave. I am uh, wishing you all the possible joy in your future retirement, but I have to say I'm going to miss you so much being in the building. I've never known a time uh, in my own teaching career without you. Um, and in fact, I even found your perfectly tight evaluation of my student teaching. I'm going to miss you so much, but you'll always be a big part of the school. I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of your last class here at FRC. Um, I just wanted to do my quick little CCAR, which stands for Compare, Contrast, Analyze, and Respond. Uh, throughout putting together this video, there's one thing that I noticed. Uh, it was that everyone will miss you. Everyone thinks that you are such an important part of FRC and I could not agree more. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Arthur. Arthur from FRC. Welcome to the Christmas special. Ah, 
there have been many memories created and celebrated at FRC. Here are the ghosts of Christmas past to introduce the staff talking about special memories celebrated on the holidays. Combined together, the ghosts have over 100 years at FRC. Gordy, 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 Mary, Mary, can you believe it? The ghosts of Christmas past. They don't, what they don't realize is that this is, these are the ghosts of the phys ed department from 38, 39 years ago. Not only the phys ed department, but the whole school. So many memories, so many memories. They don't realize that we were the volleyball coaches back in those days. We dominated the volleyball scene. That's right. That's amazing. Oh, look, I'm looking at the crystal ball right now, and it's FRC's Eagle Nest. That's the gem. Hello. Um, my favorite holiday memory growing up, my parents had, well, I grew up on a farm, and my dad would scout all of his land every, throughout the course of the year, for the best Christmas trees. And then in mid-December, we would go on a drive, he would show me his top picks and then I got to choose um, the best one and that became our Christmas tree. My dad and I would do that every year when I was in high school and it was one of my favorite things um, about Christmas growing up. Oh, hello FRC. Um, a positive or happy uh, Christmas memory that I have. Um, you know what, as I thought about this question for, for many hours, um, a lot of movies came to mind, which doesn't surprise anybody that knows me because I love movies. Uh, my all-time favorites were probably the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Claymation um, and uh, Home Alone. My sisters and I often, the night before Christmas, would uh, the three of us stay up late watching uh, a series of movies, including Home Alone, which inspired me as a young child to get my own sled and try to take it down the stairs, which didn't go very well. Uh, another memory that was Interesting was having uh, my uncle get a little heated during a game of Uno and calling me a choice name that was not appropriate for a 12 year old. 12 year old. Nonetheless, we know now not to play Uno at Christmas and uh, looking forward to eating more stuffing that I can barely handle and just being um, with a few family members, but always looking forward to the holiday. And I hope all of you at FRC have a wonderful, wonderful holiday break. My favorite Christmas memory is from when I went to visit my grandparents when I was a kid. We'd always go over the winter break and my grandparents had horses and uh, we would go to visit them and my dad and grandpa would always go and hook up the pair of horses to the sleigh. And the barns were far away from their house so they would go and then when we could start to hear the sleigh bells on the sleigh ringing at the top of the road then we knew we had to get ready and we had to get our snow pants on and all our winter gear because they never stopped <laughs> they would drive um, right up to slow down right by the side of the road and then we'd all have to jump on to the back of the sleigh and then my dad would drive us all around town up every road and we would wave at everybody and uh, it was just such a, a great memory and i miss those days all right, I just want to talk about a, uh, a, a Christmas memory that I have. I, uh, I grew up in a small town in Northwest Ontario, and uh, it was uh, a time in my life where it was, so we'd have like uh, great Christmas memories. We, we lived next to a, to a lake, and uh, we would sort of walk back through the forest, back to the lake as a, as a family, and uh, we would uh, cut, cut down a Christmas tree every year, and it was, uh, it was fun because we would uh, walk back to the lake and we had this great big bonfire uh, place under this huge tree that we would go and we'd have a, a bonfire for the afternoon and we'd sort of walk back into the into the forest and pick out these great big Christmas trees. And so uh, my older brother and I, we would uh, sort of throw it back on the sleigh behind the snow machine and uh, we would haul it back home for for my dad and we would uh, you know, bring it into the house and. Most of the time it was such a huge tree that it would reach almost to the top of the ceiling. We'd, we'd need like ladders to get up and, and decorate it and everything. So it's just lots of great memories doing that. And so every Christmas Eve, we would begin this celebration with my mother starting a roaring fire in the fireplace. And then we were allowed to open our stockings 
and deep at the bottom was a mandarin orange. And she would make us eat this orange before we could start opening presents. However, the orange had been in the stocking with the fire burning below it so long that it was always steaming hot. So this time of year always reminds me of nearly boiled mandarin oranges. Hello everyone. So my memory is uh, we are back at the farm with my whole family and we had bought my dad this chair, this easy boy chair. And we kind of figured that he knew about it. So we just had this giant box. There was nothing in it. And he thought he was gonna be really, really sneaky and say, oh, what is this thing? So he went and he jumped back and he flopped down and there was nothing in it. And he landed on his butt and we had a howl. So that was our great Christmas memory. And uh, unfortunately my dad's gone, but he's still with us. So Merry Christmas, everyone. So my Christmas memory revolves around a game that we used to play as a family. We would uh, all bring a gift wrapped up that no one else knew. It was usually around the $20 mark and we'd all pick a number. And when your number was called, you could go choose a gift from the table. And when the next person was called, they could either take that gift from you after it was unwrapped and then, uh, or they could open a new one and then the next person would go after. And one year there was a gumball machine that was the gift of choice. And uh, as kids, we were teenagers playing it and uh, everyone wanted the gumball machine. The problem was it was frozen after three times. And I think that was the only Christmas I can remember where there were actually tears shed over the game and led to the rule that we were no longer allowed to bring a gumball machine to that particular gift exchange. So this is a story of the day that I saved Christmas. Um, a few years after my grandfather died, my grandma started dating this guy named Bob. And um, he, he was somebody we didn't know, so my mom invited him over for Christmas dinner. And when he came over, we were sharing stories of our families, and he talked about how when he was a child, um, his mother died when he was a very young age, and so he was being raised by his father. Him and his brother were being raised by them, by his father. And uh, his dad took his brother out on a boating expedition, and they both drowned. So he was orphaned at a very young age, at about age four. And he told us the story about how his uncle, who was only about 14 years old at the time, took him on and started raising him. And by the time he turned 14, Bob turned 14, his uncle had to move away and, and Bob kind of raised himself after the age of 14. And I said, well, where is, what happened to your uncle? And he said, oh, I have no idea. I haven't seen him since I was you know, 14 years old. And so I asked him what his, uh, his name was, his uncle's name. And I said, do you know what happened to him after? He said, well, he, he moved to Manitoba. This, he used to live in Alberta. He moved into Manitoba and he lived in this area and he told me the area. And I got on the internet and found his, um, his uh, uncle and I phoned him and he was alive. He was 90 years old. And basically that same day we met him uh, on number two highway and it had been 60 years since they had seen each other. So these two old men run, ran on the highway to give each other a big hug after not seeing each other for 60 years. It was the best Christmas ever. Hi everyone. My favorite Christmas memory is always waiting at the top of our stairs with my brother, who's three years younger than me, so he was always the littlest one. Waiting at the top of the stairs and then running down and seeing the excitement of our gifts and what Santa had brought for us the night before. And then we would always spend our day in our festive Christmas outfits purchased at Eaton's uh, in our family, our family outfits. They look a little like this. Okay, my Christmas memory is getting a Christmas tree with my kids and Johnny, who is just like family. Um, Oliver just got this old van for age 16, bought an old, old van that was almost embarrassing to be in. But we went and got, decided to go get a real Christmas tree. So we went and I was always saying, as usual, um, gotta watch your money, can't spend too much. So let's just pick a little tiny Christmas tree. And um, that was what the kids were always so used to hearing. And so Oliver turned to me and said, mom, I'm gonna buy you a Christmas tree this year. And um, he picked out the biggest Christmas tree he could and we bought the most beautiful tree we've ever had, and that's my Christmas memory. We loaded in the van and we left. That said, One of my favorite memories was uh, one of the holiday skits that we did 
when three of us staff members were casted as French hens. So we had to wear a beret. And then I was chosen to be Justin Bieber. It was so exciting to me. I happened to be about six months pregnant. So we sang the song, Baby. <laughs> grandpa being called out of church in the paw every Christmas Eve to go feed the reindeer and of course by the time church was done he was also done his job so nobody actually saw it but then as my own child and I don't know if I don't know if it's my own memory or if I've just heard the story so many times but we traveled to the paw and because my grandpa had an in with the big guy Santa was there on Christmas Eve to give us our gifts so it was a pretty special moment and uh, my kids to this day still hear the story of how their great grandpa was the guy who fed the reindeer. One of my favorite Christmas memories is about 12 years ago we were heading home after visiting my parents. We had all of our four kids in the car and as we turned onto our street Santa Claus was walking down the street. He had a big bag of toys on his back and was walking along. We rolled down the window as we drove past him and he said to all the kids, you better hurry and get in and get to sleep because I'm here already. I've never had to talk about Santa after that. They were always so motivated to make sure they got into bed right away because last time they almost missed Santa. Anyways, tradition previous to opening emails on Christmas day was uh, opening one present on Christmas Eve after going to the Domain United Church for their Christmas service, which always ended with a silent night. So that's my Christmas memory, waiting to get home. Take note. My Christmas memory is uh, a long time ago when my youngest was, was three years old, he got chicken pox on, on Christmas Eve day. And uh, he'd been scratching all day, and at nighttime he scratched so bad that his nose wouldn't stop bleeding. So I took him to the hospital, to Mr. Cordy Hospital, and we were there all night long. They were trying to cauterize it, and he was three years old. And then at, at dawn, we came out, and we're on the walkway between Mr. Cordy Hospital and uh, the parkade. And uh, he was, I got his little hand in my hand, and he looks at me, and he sees the sunrise, and he goes, Santa Claus doesn't know where I am and I said oh he always knows where you are but every time I pass by that parkade I think of that moment with Jonathan. Probably my favorite time of, in FRC Christmas memories would be uh, doing the trick shot videos with Mr. Pop Rechny. <sighs> Good times. <laughs> And rock around. I said it's not that easy. Look at me. One of my favorite memories from Christmas time at FRC is when Miss Knight and I dressed up in pink tutus. <laughs> Christmas memory is on Christmas Eve. I come from a big Italian family and our biggest celebration was the night of Christmas Eve. Myself and my uncle would put on a little musical show for everyone. I would play the keyboard and my uncle would play his accordion that came straight from Italy. Here's a picture of us, me on the keyboard and my uncle playing his accordion. We would play Christmas songs for hours, our families would join in and sing songs and it was just so precious and this year we were gonna do the same thing, but it'll have to wait till next year. Um, growing up in the farm, Christmas was a big deal. We had lots of homemade decorations. I don't know if you can see all the tinsel hanging from that tree. Probably one of my most vivid memories of a Christmas gift was 
and my brother and sister and I opened up box within a box within a box and the final one had a key to a skidoo which was a really big deal for us to get outside and go snowmobiling that's it one day long long time ago for some reason I wanted to wear a tutu and you might see what happened after that When I was a little girl, we didn't have a Christmas tree. It wasn't part of my parents' tradition. Um, they grew up in a more closed Mennonite community, and so Christmas trees and those kinds of decorations were considered pretty English. Um, but nowadays, most Mennonites would have Christmas trees, but we didn't until I was probably six or seven, and I remember my dad, um, I don't know how he got it, but he got this second-hand Christmas tree, an artificial tree, and I remember him bringing it home and I was so excited because I finally could have this Christmas tree and or we could and um, I remember opening the box and inside this box it was pretty actually a ratty looking tree but it came with all these ornaments and some of them were pretty old I kind of felt like they must be antiques or something and some of them were just glitterly glittery and beautiful and there were lights and it also came with um, some old record albums. Um, I remember Bing Crosby and Patti Page Christmas albums. And so it was really exciting. And I remember putting up that tree for the first time and being so excited when I saw all the lights turn on and it was just beautiful. And I think that, you know, I, of course, as a child, I was always really excited about Christmas morning and opening presents. But my favorite Christmas memory is just the many times putting up that tree and then lying underneath it and looking up through the branches and seeing all the Christmas lights and listening to those old Christmas records and just imagining a magical Christmas kind of place. Things are different this year, but I believe we are still celebrating with our families. With the help from the ghost of Christmas presents, here are some traditions. Oh. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Bell. And I'm Miss Jones. And we are the ghosts of Christmas Present. Even though 2020 doesn't look the same as it usually does for Christmas, we still are going to do some Christmas traditions. And these are some of the traditions of our past. Enjoy. Hi everyone. So one of my family traditions is we always get together on Christmas Eve and we crack the Christmas cracker. This is my only one this year, so I'm not gonna crack it. My husband and I will do this on Christmas Eve. Happy holidays, take care everyone. Hey FRC, my favorite Christmas tradition revolves around baking. It's my daughter and I pulling out all of the old handwritten recipes for my mom and my grandma and making them for the people that, that are important in our life right now which this year is going to mean some deliveries instead of having people over. Happy holidays, FRC. Hello, I'm Mr. Kello. My Christmas tradition is at my house, the top of my Christmas tree always has Superman on it because Christmas for me when I was little was always about superheroes. I was obsessed with superheroes. That's all I ever asked for for Christmas. That's all I ever got for Christmas. And to this day, the top of my tree, instead of a star or an angel like most people have, I have Superman. There. Just a quick tradition. Uh, even as a young child, I remember going to midnight mass, and then after midnight mass, all my cousins, uncles, and aunts would all hop into our cars, and then start house hopping till all hours of the morning, uh, all hours of the night into the morning. So uh, at every house, there'd be music and singing, and sometimes even dancing. So that's a tradition uh, my cousins and I have tried to keep, uh, even with our own kids today. So that's a family tradition. Hi everyone at FRC. My name is Mrs. Cornelson. I'm one of the resource teachers here. And my Christmas tradition is taking my kids to get their picture taken with Santa. 
I've done it for many, many years, as you can tell by all the pictures that I'm holding. And um, it's been a great tradition for me as a mom. So this was the first picture. My son, who's now 22, he was the only one. And then shortly after came his brother. And then I don't know if you can see this one, but his brother is crying. And then this was a super cute one. And then their sister came along. So then I had all three of them. And then they even surprised me last year with a 2019 picture of all three of them now as young adults. I'm so proud of them and I love them so much. And it's, this was the only gift they gave me last year and it was the best gift ever. So happy holidays to everybody. Have a nice break. We'll see you in January. My Christmas tradition includes a Christmas tree that um, my family, including my two boys, purchased in the year 2000. Every year we put up the same artificial Christmas tree and we fill it full of um, ornaments and uh, that they've made, they made over the years at school. And it's a tradition that we do every year together. So my Christmas tradition uh, actually comes on Christmas Eve. My family follows the Ukrainian Catholic tradition. So you fast all day, we don't eat anything. And then for supper, we're supposed to have 12 traditional dishes, starting with uh, kutia which is a buckwheat and poppy seed kind of porridge mix, which doesn't sound very good, but it was my favorite. There's a lot of honey in it, I think, and maybe that's why. Uh, so we start with that, and we have dishes like halopchi and pierogi and all of the good Ukrainian food. <laughs> so we do that for Christmas Eve, and then we always would open our presents that night before Christmas Day, because on Christmas Day, we would go to Dauphin, where my Ukrainian side of the family is. And it was tradition that the youngest in the family always had to hand out the presents, which I still have to do to this day because nobody is coming around younger than me. My brother does have kids now, but they don't know how to read. So I'm still kind of stuck with that for a while. Um, but that's my Christmas tradition. I just want to quickly talk about my uh, family's Christmas traditions. Um, I actually celebrate two Christmases, one uh, December 25th and one on uh, January 7th. And for our Christmas dinner, uh, we did have a specific tradition that we don't get to eat any of the meals until the setting of the first star. Um, so when the sun goes down and it gets darker, once we see the shining star in the sky, that is the sign for us to start the meal. And then um, everyone gets together, of course, uh, we rejoice, we sing lots of Christmas carols, and then there's a small tradition that uh, uh, the children are doing, and I used to do it as well, believe it or not. Uh, you will uh, uh, hide around the house and there will be Christmas presents hidden and you'll have to find them and then whatever you find, you get to keep. So that's really, really exciting because sometimes you can find uh, just a small toy and sometimes you can find uh, a big electronic toy such as uh, you know Xbox or PlayStation. So that was really, really neat when I was growing up. Um, another tradition that we have on Christmas Day, we would always wake up super early in the morning, not to see the presents, but just to see the sunrise. And that just signaled the whole uh, beginning of the year. So that, that's really neat. And I really am going to miss it. Um, and hopefully uh, this year is a bit different. Uh, but next year, my hopes that I will continue to do this tradition and for generations to come. All right, thank you. So, okay, so our family tradition in our house is to open a present from the tree. My nana is Norwegian, and so each year on the 24th, um, there is a tree present that is supposed to be a gift from the tree that is hidden in the tree branches, and your job is to find your gift and open it and then celebrate with the family um, that is there that night. And that's our holiday tradition. So my favorite tradition is probably looking through my mom's recipe uh, recipes of Christmas dainties um, and picking one out because unfortunately my mom and grandma are no longer with us, but I like to bake and kind of pretend I'm baking with them from one of the recipes. All right. I am gonna tell you my favorite Christmas tradition is actually decorating my Christmas tree with my family. So I used to do it with my family, my parents and my sisters. 
check out that sweet 1988 Mishiak ornament there. Now I decorate my tree with my um, my family, my my daughters. Here we all are, and then of course I have the uh, Safe at Home 2020 ornament for the COVID year. But that's definitely my favorite thing. Oh, hello, FRC peeps. Our Christmas Eve, we have a fondue every year. We uh, open up one present on Christmas Eve. It's usually pajamas. And Christmas morning, when we wake up and Santa's there, always in our stocking, there's always been an orange. I wish you guys all a safe holiday, Merry Christmas, and uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, Christmas wasn't always a happy time for me growing up. Uh, uh, so I was always a bit of a Scrooge, never really a fan of Christmas. Uh, but uh, I have a tradition that uh, we started with a, uh, a group of friends that I've known since, uh, oh my goodness, 26 years now, because I'm old. Uh, we call it Other Family Christmas. Uh, we have a potluck every year where we make far too much food and we, uh, we laugh and we uh, have a gift exchange where we have intentionally terrible gifts. Uh, and uh, gradually, this sort of chipped away at my anti-Christmas uh, shield. And I've come to like Christmas because I've come to realize that uh, through this, that I've come to realize that Christmas is about uh, laughing and it's about joy and finding and finding happiness uh, during the darkest days of the year. And if there was ever a time when we needed to find joy in the darkest days of the year, it is right now. So that's that's my Christmas tradition. Yeah. Hi everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh... I just want to tell you about a little tradition that I have at Christmas. Uh, when I was a little girl, uh, my family and my, uh, or my mom and my dad and my siblings never ate a lot of junk during the year, junky food. Um, but at Christmas time, we always look forward to having chips and dip. So ripple chips and onion soup mixed with sour cream. And we always knew when the chips were coming out because my mom would put it in a special bowl and we would eat chips until we wanted to puke. So I've carried on that tradition uh, when, at Christmas time when I pull out my special bowl my kids know that we're having chips and dip and it's a pretty awesome bowl too have to say. So uh, that is my or one of my Christmas traditions. Bye! The game is called Holbrow or a Hallmark. Is the following scene torn from a scrapbook of my own family traditions or from the script of your favorite Hallmark movie? Imagine it, kids sitting cozy in their onesies watching their favorite Christmas movie, Polar Express. Holbrow or Hallmark? If you guessed Holbrow, you win! Merry Christmas! Hi. I guess probably my favorite uh, tradition that I have going is uh, using this guy. Right? This is the first gift that I got that I can remember as a child. And so when I decorate the tree, what he does is he is on the top. So he's the star or the angel. It is this monkey. Peace and innocence. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, good. Okay, thanks. Hello, everyone. Have a wonderful holiday. For me, holidays mean uh, Christmas Eve going to church. And no matter where I am in the world, because I've been in a lot of different churches throughout the world on Christmas Eve, everyone is happy and everyone is feeling like community and I love that. Have a great holiday. Bye. So one of our Jones family Christmas traditions and it's also a memory so it could be kind of in both categories is a jar of pickled herring and what that is is exactly as it sounds it is a jar of fish and every Christmas, we always put this out. You have to have this out or it isn't Christmas at the Jones house. You take a saltine soda cracker, salted top, must be, no substitutions on the cracker. You then take a piece of fish, put it on the cracker, a white onion, just one little piece, and then a dollop of sour cream on top, and then you toss it back. And it is a Jones family Christmas tradition. I remember it being out on the table when I was little, and it is something that has to be there every single year. So if you are in the market for a good appetizer, there you go. I mean, what else can I say? 
Enjoy. We don't know what is to come, but with the help from the ghosts of Christmas future, we wish all season greetings. Oh! Marty, can you believe it? We just got back from Christmas in the future. Ah, Christmas in the future, Doc. It looks so much better. We can meet with our friends and families. Oh, it's so much better than Christmas is right now. And best, best of, all, of all, no more COVID. No more COVID, but those killer bees in the future. Watch out for those. Have a joyous holiday. Hak Shemeach. Season's greetings. Watch Ie, Mino Kisika. Hello, good day. Feliz Natal a todos. Merry Christmas, everyone. Tuk ban ki ni voivea. Merry Christmas. Praznik. Season's greetings, everyone. Mio Manitoi Kasik Anisik. Merry Christmas. Zuva Mida. Happy holidays. Subani Vabuak. Happy holidays. Jajna Christmas a poshi bit, Usar Salawa Birosbit. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Kisetsuno Goai Setsu. Season's greetings. Kales de Kopes. Happy holidays. Outla Saida. Kalik fin bet. Season's greetings and stay home. Idawa Biruzi Bay. Season's greetings. Natar Valtakun. Merry Christmas. Uzan Gun Kankomenen. Season's greetings. Eligayong Pasco Sain Yang Lahat. Merry Christmas. Season's greetings. Joyeux Noël, les étudiants. Merry Christmas, students. Sashliva Prajnikov. Happy holidays. Lekizu Ya Faraha. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Okay. Feliz Navidad y Felices Fiesta. Um, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Rahus Bal. Season's greetings. Grusa der Saison. Season's greetings. Season's greetings. And in English, it's season's greetings. Jie ru kwai le. Happy holidays. Chubuna bobo show. Happy new year. Meo mento kisugunsik. Merry Christmas. Salam be iranian. Aziz. Christmas and Salanoi Miladi Mubarak, Arazuye Betarin Hava, Sal Salomati, or Mafaria Bari Hamedara. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, wishing to have a best year ahead. Niba Anamae Gijigad. It's Christmas. Satria Kal, Sarano Christmas, the Navisaldi board board for Daikun. Hello, everybody. Wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay. Yeah. Sing Ang Fai Lok, Gong Hei Fat Choi. Happy Holidays and Happy New Year. Jai Shri Krishna. Nutan Varsa Vinanda. Happy New Year to all. Edlan et e. Danist and Losa. Hello. I will see you again. Chil Gaon. Christmas e Ponetteo. Have a good Christmas. Selamat Bagribo. Happy holidays. Aap sabhi ko naye saal ki shubh kamnaye. Naye saal aapke liye mangal hai. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you and your whole family. J'aimerais vous souhaiter de bonnes vacances. Joyeuse fête, joyeux Noël et bonne heureuse année. I want to wish you all a very happy holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Tawake and Tawaje Karwale K. Asa Sabnadi Tarpo, Kanepe Kani, Navas Alji, Mubar Kahoja. Khuda Hafiz. From all of us to all of you, a new Happy New Year to all of you. Milad Majid, Kula Amun Tukher. 
تمنياتي لكم بقضاء اسعد الاوقات مع العائله خليك بالبيت ميري كريسماس اند هابي هوليداي انجوي يور تايم وذ يور فاميلي اند ستي هوم جيتشينيا شون تشنه شين شلوغا نوغا روكو هابي هوليدايز اند اول ذا بيست فور ذا نيو يير To help with my second job, I ask the FRC staff a few questions that will help me fill the season with joy. <laughs> Survey safe! Dashing through the snow. Oh, Christmas tree. Carol of the Bells by the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Silent Night. I really don't like Christmas carols, but what child is this? Uh, Silent Night. Um, Jingle Bell. No, Good King Wenceslas. That's my favorite. We wish you Merry Christmas. Oh, my favorite Christmas song is Oh Holy Night. Joy to the world. Uh, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. Uh, Silent Night. Um, the first Noel. My kids know that. <laughs> Noel. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, favorite Christmas song. Um, cliche, but Mariah Carey, all I want for Christmas is you. Oh, Holy Night. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's called Snow. It's from the movie, um, White Christmas. Oh, uh, what's that one? Um, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Joy to the World. Uh, the whole Sia Christmas album. Bam. Favorite Christmas song is actually Oh Du Fräulein, which is an old song that we used to sing as a family with my grandparents. It came upon a midnight clear. Nice. Nice. Uh, I think I should say nice because it's school related. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, Nani. <laughs> nice. I'm a gentleman. Nice. Both? I'm always nice. <laughs> oh. I, I, I don't want to say my husband. <laughs> My husband, probably my oldest son. Probably my wife. <laughs> oh, the family stone. Christmas vacation. Love actually. Anything by the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> oh, It's a Wonderful Life just kills me at the end. Ugh. It's not necessarily a Christmas movie. I watch Annie every year at Christmas. It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> no time like Christmas. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I have a daughter in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, It's a Wonderful Life, of course. Um, National Lampoon. Christmas. Uh, Griswold's family Christmas. <laughs> Love. I think some of my homemade baking uh, to people who maybe miss some of that in their life. I think the best gift I ever gave somebody was their family back. <laughs> cool. But it was a puppy, and it was because I got to keep it too. I got a really nice ring one time. It was quite a nice ring. Best gift she ever gave you. <laughs> me? Oh, yeah. She got me a really nice uh, set of suitcases once that were really nice, I think, yeah. Cool. I don't know. And the best gift your sister ever gave. <laughs> My sister ever gave. Oh. She's very thoughtful. Right now, I can't think of any, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I 
gave my husband a didgeridoo once because he kept like saying that he could always guess whatever gift it was. And so I wrapped this big, long didgeridoo and he did not guess it. Um, the gift of my friendship. <laughs> I gave my dad um, an electric espresso maker and it was one that his uncle um, used to make espresso on. So it was really it was precious to my dad. Oh, she's definitely the better gift giver. She gave me a stereo when I was like six and it had a tape player that could record. It was so funny. Children. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shortbread. Definitely shortbread. Gingerbread. Mm, in moderation. Yeah, I could drink some eggnog. Uh, yay, big time. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Gross. I do enjoy an eggnog. Ah, uh, yay. Okay, I am off to my second job. Look for a man in the sky. Oh. Mm -hmm. In the sky. Flashback. Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these days from FRC, we could go over everything. <laughs>
and despite the fact that the 2020 it, we have to do it again. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. Suva Mida. Mm -mm. There's no V in it. Growing up in the farm, Christmas was a big deal. We did lots of homemade cel or, or um, oh god, what that? Okay, Subani Fudge. <laughs> So one of my favorite memories from FRC, I don't oh know, start over. No. Oh, sorry. My best Christmas memory is one of New Year's, or Christmas. Can I start over? Yeah. Feliz Navidad y felices Nis... Okay, I screwed up. Jiru Kwai Lu. Happy holidays. What? Why? You don't need to read it. You have yeah, to I do you need to read it. Okay. <sighs> no, no. Oh. <laughs> and then when you get the you take cozy in their onesies watching their very favorite Christmas movie, Polar Express. <laughs> expression. Polar Expression? Merry Christmas. Action. Sing Ong Fai Lok Gong He Fat Choi. Happy Holidays <laughs> and Happy New Year. <laughs> Can I hide my uh, bowl first? Yeah, let me just try one time. Yep. So, yeah. Sri Saranu, what Christmas day? Oh, see, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do this. Chilgaun, Christmas day, Poneteo. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's not what I was saying. Sorry. Have a good Christmas. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. I hope I don't have any like uh, chicken provolone good, on my face good, or anything. We'll tell you. <laughs> that my mother had shoved to the bottom of the stocking and she would make us eat the stocking. However, <laughs> sorry, can I start again? Yeah. She, she didn't make us eat the stocking. <laughs> 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 You're not going to restart it? No. Okay.